Today I'm outside with a Crown Vic and we're going to talk a little bit about serpentine belt drives. Most vehicles today utilize a multi-rib V-style belt with an automatic tensioner. And so those systems are pretty easy to work on. They're certainly less troublesome and maybe less time for us as technicians than your older manually adjusted V-belts. Um, but there are some quirks and some things to pay attention to, as well as some tools that help us in that process. This tool set here is one that is incredibly useful when we work on serpentine belts. It is a gear wrench serpentine belt tool. It utilizes this long arm here with a specialty ratchet wrench in order to make different combinations to unload my automatic tensioner. Automatic tensioners come with lots of different styles in terms of how we get access to them. This particular one on the Crown Vic uses a 3 8 drive just like on any wrench. And so I can load that up and then this gives me a lot of leverage in order to overcome the spring tension of that automatic tensioner. In order to remove this belt, the first thing I want to do is identify where the tensioner is on my belt drive. So this serpentine belt, I can see a lot of it from this view. There are some things like the crank pulley we can't see. And this happens to be our tensioner over here. If I didn't know where my tensioner was, one quick way I can check for that on an automatic tensioner setup is to take the belt in a location like this and pull on it. Look for the component that moves. I can see my tensioner down here moving. The other thing that that tells me is which way I need to unload the tensioner in order to remove the belt. So we know we need to rotate that clockwise. So I've got my gear wrench tool set up with a 3 8 drive. I know I need to go clockwise with it. I'm going to set it in my tensioner like that. And now I can unload the belt without a lot of strain and I can remove the belt and relax the tensioner. It's important that I relax the tensioner slow and that I do not let it snap back. Tensioners are often made of cast aluminum, and if I allow that to snap back, the steel spring in them are strong enough that it could break the tensioner itself. When I go to remove this belt, if I plan to reuse it, it is important that I pay attention to which way the belt was facing so that I can put it on so that it rotates the same direction. This helps minimize some noises and squeals and potential issues I might have after reusing a belt. This one's got some markings on it, with the letters facing into the block in the engine. And so I could use that as my reference. If I needed, I could put a small arrow here, but I have to be very cautious about what I use to do that. A grease pen or something like that is probably not a good choice. With the belt off, it would be a good time to inspect whether or not this belt needs replacing. There's some rules of thumb that we look at. One of those is the amount of cracks that go this way horizontally in this belt. If there were substantial cracks within an inch or two window, that would be cause for concern. The other thing is to look for uneven wear, scoring on the sides, or overly glazed and shiny on the backside of the belt. Any of those things tell me that maybe there's an issue that the belt has become worn out, or maybe there's a misalignment issue. If I was removing this belt entirely, I would wanna pay attention to my routing. Oftentimes that routing diagram is easily found on the core support as a sticker. I found a great best practice is to make a quick sketch of this belt layout myself just on a piece of scratch paper so that I know exactly how it goes back on at the end of the service. To put this belt back on, I would need to make sure it's routed properly on all the pulleys. Typically I would get it set up to where I have just one pulley left like this that's easily accessible. I'm going to unload the tensioner again, put the pulley on, make sure that it's lined up on all the pulleys nearby and then unload the tensioner. Before starting the car, I always want to do a visual inspection and make sure that my belt is fully engaged on the pulleys as it should be, whether that's a rib pulley or a smooth pulley, the idlers, and all the accessories included. I wanna make sure those are all good before I start the vehicle. Belt service is one of those easy service items that has a lot of small details I need to pay attention to. Inspecting the belt and make sure it's in good condition and replacing it when it's worn is just one part of the equation. Before I remove a belt for a noise complaint, I always want to run the vehicle and take a close look at the belt with the belt in operation. Oftentimes a failed tensioner will show and exhibit movements and even kind of a rattling. And that tells me that the spring has become weak or the hydraulic portion of that tensioner has become weak and probably needs to be replaced. The other thing that's important to look at in this process is alignment of accessories and pulleys. When a tensioner goes bad, oftentimes it becomes misaligned. 
and that crooked pulley can cause accelerated belt wear and glazing of the backside of the belt, which creates noise. So always do a visual inspection and use other tools to your advantage to check for pulley alignment. So there's some great tools like laser sights that help me with that process, but a basic straight edge really goes a long way. Those are some of the common things to look for in this process of a serpentine belt removal and reinstallation. This sequence is really common for a lot of different services. I've got to do this when I replace an alternator or any other part of the accessory. And so it's something that I'm going to come into contact with a lot. Keeping the belt clean, paying attention to its rotation. These are all great steps that will help ensure that we don't create a problem as we go through another service.